Hello everyone, let's solve a very interesting problem today. We are given some glasses stacked as a pyramid and some champagne is poured at the topmost glass. It is given that when a glass becomes full, any excess drink will fall equally from the left and the right of the glass. And we are given the amount of poured champagne and we have to find out how much of a particular glass at a given index will be filled. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. If one unit of champagne is poured, the topmost glass will be completely filled with it. But since there is no extra champagne to spill, nothing will spill from either the left or the right side. So all these glasses below will be completely empty. Let's see what happens when two units of champagne is poured. The topmost glass will be completely filled with one unit. But one unit of extra champagne was poured into it so it will spill out. This one unit of extra champagne will be spilled out equally from both the sides and this 0.5 units will be collected in their lower glasses. Let's see what happens when we pour 4 units. We'll fill the topmost glass with 1 unit and 3 units will be extra. So 1.5 units will be spilled out from both the left and the right side. So for these two glasses 1.5 units is being poured into them. So one unit will fill them completely and the 0.5 unit will be spilled out equally from both the sides. Now for the last row, the left and the right glasses are receiving 0.25 units. But the middle glass is receiving 0.25 units from two above glasses. Hence it will be half filled. So if we are given this position of the glass, this will refer to the bottom right glass and the number of units of champagne in it will be 0.25. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's try to identify some patterns using some simple examples. If we pour 0.5 units then our top glass will be half filled and there will be no spillage. If we pour 1 unit then it will be completely filled but still there will be no spillage. Now when we pour more than 1 unit into a glass then half of that extra amount will be spilled from both sides. And this will be collected by the two lower glasses at the left and the right. When we pour three units, then the lower glasses will be completely filled. But since they have not received any more units than one, they won't have any excess, so there will be no spillage from them. Now when we pour five units, then the lower glasses will receive two units each. Now this extra one unit will spill to the lower row. If we just focus on this glass, it is being filled by the spillage from these two above glasses. Similarly, this glass is filled by the spillage from these two glasses. And this glass is being filled by these two above glasses. Let's try to find a generalized position for the two above glasses from which spillage will happen. Well, the row number is very easy to determine because it will be above our current glass. But when we look at the column number, the left glass will have a column number one less than our current glass. And the right glass will have the same column number as our current glass. This will be valid for any of the middle glasses. But when we look at the corner glasses, we see that only one glass will be able to pour into them. So in general for the left corner glass, it will receive spillage from the above glass at the 0th index. And for the right cornered glass, the above glass will have a column number 1 less than it. When we look at this glass, it receives spillage from these two above glasses and the amount of spillage it will receive from each glass would be the half of the extra liquid in each of these two glasses. So if we were to find out the extra for these two glasses, we could find the total amount poured in the lower glass. Similarly, this glass will receive spillage from these two above glasses and this amount would be the half of the extra in these two glasses. Similarly, when we look at this corner glass, it will be filled by the half of the extra in the above glass. So if we could find out the extra poured into a particular glass, we can use it to determine the amount of spillage to the lower glass. So if we are trying to calculate the extra poured into a particular glass, anything above the one unit required to fill that glass completely would be extra. So the formula for it would be the amount poured into the glass minus 1. For example, if two units of liquid is poured into a glass, one unit will be used to fill it up completely and the remaining one unit will be extra. Please note that we are using the maximum of this difference with zero 
because if we have a scenario in which less than one unit of liquid is poured into a glass after subtracting one from it we'll get a negative number since we cannot have a negative amount as extra liquid in that case the extra would be zero units let's note down some of the formulas that will be required to determine the amount of liquid poured into a glass we'll need the half of the extra amount in its left parent we already have the index of the left parent and to calculate the extra for this index we'll have to calculate the amount poured into that glass and we can use this formula recursively to find all of these similarly we also have to calculate the half of the extra from the right parent we already know the position of the right parent so we'll use these formulas recursively to find the answer the time complexity of this would be o of the square of the number of rows because this will be the number of glasses and we have to calculate for each of them and the space complexity of this would be o of the square of the number of rows for a recursive memorization solution because it's going to be two dimensional and since we have already seen in this channel that we can optimize the space complexity for two dimensional dps using a tabular approach the space complexity in this case would be o of the number of rows let's implement both the solutions let's first implement a recursive solution so we'll define a recursive dfs function which returns the amount of liquid poured into a particular glass we already know that for the topmost glass the amount of liquid poured will be the total liquid poured so we'll just return it now let's handle the case when our current glass is a left coordinate glass in this case its column number would be 0 and it would receive half of the extra spillage from the left coordinate glass just one row above it and for calculating that value we'll have to subtract 1 from the amount of liquid poured into that glass this will give the extra amount in the glass and we have to divide it by 2 to get the spillage in our current glass since this value can be negative if the amount of liquid poured will be less than 1 we'll take a maximum of this with 0 and now we'll handle the case for our right corner glasses even in this case we'll just reuse our previous formula since it will be receiving spillage from the right corner glass in the above row the row number would remain the same but its column number would be one less than our current column number and now for our middle glasses they will be receiving spillage from both the upper left and the upper right glasses we'll reuse this to find the spillage from the upper left glass and we also have to add the spillage from the upper right glass so we'll again reuse the above formula the column number for the upper right glass would be the same as our current column number so now we are done with our recursive function that returns the amount of liquid poured in a particular glass let's make sure to catch the results so we'll now call this function for our input row and column number since the amount poured can be more than the capacity of a glass in that case the glass would be completely filled and will return one so we'll take the min of the amount poured and the capacity of the glass which is one we are now done with our memoization solution let's implement the tabular dp solution let's define an array to store the amount of liquid poured in the upper row since the number of columns can at most be equal to the number of rows we'll initialize this array to be zero for all the columns from zero till r we know that for the topmost glass the amount poured would be the total amount of liquid poured since its column number would be zero we'll store this at the zeroth index now we'll start calculating the amount of liquid poured for all the glasses starting from row number one to the row number of the glass we are looking for we'll define another array to store the amount poured for each glass in our current row we'll initialize this to be zero for all the columns starting from zero till our row number now we'll go through all the columns in this row the maximum column number that will be possible will be the row number of the glass we are looking for now let's handle the case when our current glass is a left coordinate glass in that case the amount poured in our current glass will be half of the extra liquid poured in the left corner glass of the upper row this amount will be stored in the upper list at the zeroth index and we have to subtract one to find the extra and then divide it by two to get the spillage now we'll handle the case when our current glass is a right coordinate glass in this case it will receive spillage from the right coordinate upper glass the column number for this glass would be one less than our current column number now we'll handle the case for our middle glasses in this case it will receive spillage from the upper left glass so we'll just reuse the previous formula 
it will also receive spillage from the upper right glass. So we'll again reuse this and change the column number. The column number for our upper right glass would be the same as our current column number. Once we are done calculating the amount poured for our current row, for the next row, our current row's calculated results will be the results for the upper row. So our current row will become the next upper row. Once we are done calculating the results for our input row, our last computed results will be stored in the upper row. And this amount poured can be found at the index equal to the glasses column number. We have to take the minimum of this with 1 in case our current glass has overflowed. We are now done with our solution. Let's submit it. You can see that our solution is accepted. If you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.